Hi everyone, welcome to this update video uh, on the 19th weekend uh, of, since lockdown was first imposed in the UK. Um, I, I think we all thought that things might be improving, but uh, we woke up this morning to the news that sort of large areas of north, the north of England have been subjected to kind of regional lockdown, and that includes like Greater Manchester. Uh, Leicester is already under lockdown and um, various other regions throughout the north of England, so which is obviously not very good news. Um, I'm sure it's absolutely the right thing to do, um, but uh, it just demonstrates that although you can sort of lead, lead yourself into a false sense of hope really, that it was all sort of coming to an end, or at least there was a sign that we were starting, it was the beginning of the, of the end, but apparently not so. So, um, you know, we're, you know, we're still under lockdown and uh, I'm, you know, I'm still, going to carry on issuing these weekly updates um, and I'm probably going to carry on after lockdown you know after the, imp the imposition lockdown is complete um, due to popular demand that uh, these kind of weekly update videos from the shack uh, are proving sort of pretty popular which is uh, which is nice so um, you know and I quite enjoy doing them so here we are in the shack yet again now this weekend um one of the things i am going to be doing is i'm going to be continuing to use this the panasonic rf 3100l otherwise known as the dr31 1982 vintage this radio came out and um, i've always wanted one of these sort of tabletop panasonic radios or that sort of tabletop form factor um this is actually the one i really wanted i wanted the rf uh, B600, which is about 10 years newer. I think I made that point in a previous video. Um, but nevertheless, um, this you wouldn't buy one of those radios for 50 quid, which is what this cost me. In fact, Tam went off to have a look at the uh, the, the RF B600, or is it the 600B? I think it's the B600. But anyway, um, he wasn't he wasn't sure what it was. Uh, but I'm sure when he sees it, he, he'll recognise it. Um, this this is a good radio. Uh, audio is nice, but on on a weaker signal it, it does sound a bit muddy i mean that's with the treble fully up and the bass fully down um this is cri but anyway um on a strong signal, you know, on Radio 4, for example, a long wave, it just sounds superb. Um, the problem with this radio is that it's very difficult. Um, it doesn't lend itself, at least, to attaching a mag, mag loop to it because it doesn't have a low Z sort of BNC connection. It has three terminals for VHF, low Z AM, high Z AM, and an earth. Um, and so I've been using it with a wire, with my NFED uh, top band wire, which is 36 metres long and kind of zigzags down the garden, which isn't ideal. Um, and certainly not ideal if you're comparing it to another radio uh, that's connected to a mag loop. And that's a definite disadvantage. But one thing I did uh, discover a couple of nights ago, um, Radio Tama in Peru on 4775 kilohertz has been really strong. I haven't heard it this strong for a long time, maybe ever. And I've recorded it on several radios in the shack. Um, but connected to a mag loop. But I also managed to record it on this radio connected to that piece of wire. Uh, uh, I let the recording run for a while and uh, eventually kind of signal faded in and there was clear discernible audio. So I think that demonstrates that, although I haven't looked at the specs, that this is a sensitive radio with a decent antenna. You know, back in 1982 when the uh, electro smog, you know, the noise floor wasn't sort of typically minus 100 and you know 100 dbs or whatever 110 it was you know 130 140 no doubt this is a sensitive radio um, with good audio um simplicity in itself but um i'm sort of intrigued by it because it's kind of it's sort of a halfway house between like a sort of professional radio something akin to an frg 77 and a kind of obviously a consumer product um i these were sold, I think, in quite large numbers. Um, this is the European version the, uh, with the L uh, uh, suffix to designate the fact that it's got the long wave broadcast band, which is good, obviously. So I'm going to be using this radio at the weekend. Now, one of my subscribers ha ha um, suggested it would be interesting to compare the performance of this radio to another radio of the era, uh, the same era, the FRG 7700. And I, actually, and I think that's a great idea. So here's Radio China. 
International CRI. And on the telescopic, and here's the same signal on the frog. So that's both on the telescopic. I mean, what I've done is the uh, Yaesu is on the FRA 7700, but I've got the preamp actually switched off. So it's just a tuned uh, tuned telescopic. Um, so that's probably a bit of an advantage. But the uh, on a strong signal, um, this Panasonic sort of seems to hold up quite well against the, uh, the frog. Um, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to attach identical antennas, wire antennas to both radios and do a comparison. But I quite like that idea. So I'm gonna, if I got time this weekend, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make that uh, make that comparison and uh, check out the performance of the Panasonic against the uh, Yaesu. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I was doing FT8 with the FRG 7700 um, the other night. Oh, by the way, look what's made an appearance. The uh, Eaton Grundig uh, edition satellite. Uh, I, I got this radio out because um, I wanted to record Radio Tama on it and I didn't manage it. Um, but what I did manage was I recorded Radio Verdach from Guatemala on 4055. Um, haven't used that radio for a long, long time, so it was nice to get that radio out. Anyway, going back to the uh, FT8, the 991. So um, I was doing FT8 on um, six meters. Now, my six meter setup is not ideal at all. In fact, it's fairly rubbish. Um, I'm actually using the, the uh, G5RV for six meters. It does match okay, but clearly not ideal. Um, and you can see the G5RV, the center support. And then to the left is my homemade uh, coaxial uh, uh, um, collinear for um, 77s and two meters made by G1ZMA. And then you've got my coaxial kind of vertical dipole that I made for four meters. So I'm pretty good on 72 and four, six, not so good. Um, but I, um, I was doing FT8 on, on uh, six meters the other night and really struggling to get any signal out at all i was i was sort of decoded a couple of times and um i think i'm I, I, this weekend i'm going to do a bit more there's there have been some lifts on six meters this week i keep getting text messages from my friends from harwell telling me oh there's another, there's another lift on six meters and i'm either at work or out or and i've missed it so um uh, even though my setup's not good using a g5 rv i am getting out there um, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to let this run a bit over the weekend and see where I am. So uh, it'll, that that will be interesting. I need to do something really. Six meters is where I'm really not very not very strong at all. I'm using 40 watts uh, at the moment um, with the with the FT991. So you know, in terms of my, the actual setup here, um, I'm good on 70, good on two, good on. Four, very good on four actually and I think I've said to you guys that I'm being copied you know with five watts I'm being copied 60 over nine on the other side of Oxfordshire and then with the G5 RV obviously I'm good from uh, 80 meters down um, and I'm good on top band with my NFED uh, homebrew wire so uh, that's all very positive but in another positive step um, M0KEP who's a friend of mine from Harwell Amateur Radio Society um, I just been around his house earlier well on my way home from work um because i lent him one of my wellbrook loops he was into it the guys there have been quite interested in the wellbrook loop because i got into the habit of um uh, a while ago before i had my own top band transmitting antenna i would usually give them signal reports on the, on the mag loop but also on my um g5 rv or, or one of my other uh, um antennas on on top band um just to let them know how i was copying them and um which interested quite a few of them what they didn't like was the price but um because i've got two uh i, I said i mentioned to uh, to tim that you could borrow it so i just dropped it i dropped it around his house actually yesterday um and he wasn't in um but today i spoke to him and he said that he was he, he'd like to lend me this antenna which is a diamond now it's not an X6000 because it doesn't have 23 SEMs, but it, it, it has 70 SEMs and two meters. So effectively it's collinear. Um, 
I forgot to ask him what model it actually is, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a diamond, and I think it's basically the it's the version of that antenna without 23 sems, basically. Now he told me that it's got some gain, so it's going to be an improvement. Although um, my uh, that homebrew made by G1ZMA works very well, it's certainly an improvement on my existing antenna. This antenna's got a little bit of gain. I can't remember whether he said three dBs. Possibly, I can't remember, but um, definitely worth a try. The only downside with this is that, although it's very light, it's not. It's quite a bit heavier than my homebrew, so um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to uh, mount it quite as high uh, as my uh, existing antenna, which is just a sort of very thin whip, or at least most of it is anyway. But uh, I'll figure it out one way or another. So um, one thing I'm definitely going to do this weekend is mount that antenna. Um, I have actually got another pole. Um, I went to Decathlon and bought two of these seven or eight meter fishing poles. I think they're called, well, roach poles. Um, so I've got a spare one, but the only problem with that is that I then got to find another piece of coax, which I do have, but I think it's, I'm not sure if it's 50 ohm or not. So um, I'm probably gonna have to take this thing down again, and take that homebrew off and put this one up. But it, it, in very interested to, to sort of see how that improves my, um, how, how my signal's getting out on two meters and 70 sems. And it's very easy actually to check because other than um, obviously getting a signal report from one of the guys from Harwell, um, it's literally just to um, just to run FT8 for a day on one or both bands. Um, and you get a feel pretty, pretty, pretty quickly uh, as to whether the, the new antenna is performing better than the, uh, better than the old. Um, I wasn't sure actually when I took this, when I, um, when, when I took this off well this is mine when i um uh put this put the antenna together it's got a, like a uhf style connector um luckily i had one so uh so i can go down to uh rg58 bnc and connect it up no problem but uh yeah interesting to uh interesting to uh to compare the performance of this antenna to um to my homebrew so this is i think this is the first sort of commercial uh, product that I've bought for um, for two meters and seventy sems. I've never, I don't think I've ever bought a collinear. The first one I had was made out of welding rod, and then the uh, and then I, uh, G1ZMA built me one out of copper tubing, which was huge. Well, hugely, it was very heavy at least anyway. Um, and then uh, and then um, and then this one. So uh, so yeah, so that's something I'll be doing as well. And I'll, I'll be doing some videos on that. Uh, at some point um, I was thinking about doing a separate video on it just to but I guess it's so straightforward to build it hardly need a video from me to show you guys how to uh, put one of these antennas together um, in the uh, shack actually I'll just show you I think actually might be a seven meter I've got the um, one of these a spare pole uh, yeah so that I don't know yeah a lakeside one 700 so a seven meter pole but you can sort of strap them to a fence at least a meter above the ground so you get sort of eight meters plus uh and i attach um plastic sort of pipe to mine to get even more height um and they are they are 12 quid and well worth buying if you're if you're if like me um you don't want to get into putting up anything very permanent or, or you're not allowed to of course um so, uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely worth having. So I'm just going back to the FT8 on six meters, and I was last heard three minutes ago. And um, what have we got? Uh, oh, there you go. Something. There you go. Germ oh, I've got myself into Germany. Pretty good going. Very good going, actually. So uh, something happening maybe, who knows? I'll just keep it running and uh, we'll see what happens. So anyway, there you go. Uh, and then lastly, um, studying for the full license. St I'm still doing it, I'm still there. Um, I've got to pay, oh, I'm on page 87, which is the, um, this is the EMC chapter 13, electromagnetic compatibility. So there's a lot of questions in the exam on EMC. In fact, I think it says, here you go, questions for topic, yeah. Um, electromagnetic compatibility, 10 questions 
on that. So a lot of questions, probably 15% of the whole exam is on EMC, maybe slightly more than that. So uh, important chapter. And um, fortunately for me, just a little bit more understandable, legible than uh, some of the electronics, because I'm not an electronics engineer by any stretch of the imagination. I last studied electronics when I did A-level physics. I think I explained that was like 30 years ago or whatever. So um, anyway, just a few more pages to go and the, and the book will be complete. Um, and then it'll be a case of literally reading it again, because um, I'm going to have to go through this probably several times before I feel sort of comfortable with with doing the exam um, and there's no doubt that certain parts of it are actually quite tricky it feels like a very big step up from intermediate which didn't feel like a particularly big step up from foundation that's just me um, this feels like a much bigger step up thank goodness that it, there are sections large sections of this book that aren't actually part of the exam the bits you have to learn have the little mortarboard symbol next to them now there's still a lot of them but probably probably in total maybe half of this book you've got to learn maybe the actual syllabus is quite a bit bigger than than what than the examinable examinable component which is uh, good news because some of it is a bit sort of heavy going um particularly if like me you, you haven't really been involved in uh, in electronics but at the end of the day if you actually go through it in terms of a strategy for the exam licensing is just a case of remembering so there's no reason really why you shouldn't get all seven questions right um technical aspects um I, you know i think that at the end of the day um you know operating sort of techniques and you know all that stuff i, th I think really it's just a case of learning it um the um it's the electronics for me really transmitters and receivers again it's just a case of learning it um feeders and antennas should come easily as should propagation uh electromagnetic capability again is just a matter of really of learning it so a lot of it is just a case of getting the graft in and actually learning it so um, um and then the bit that where you actually need to develop a proper understanding is some of the electronics but uh, you know hopefully by the time i actually get an exam uh i'll be well prepared or at least prepared enough anyway i think you need 60 percent. so uh you know just keep going with that keep slogging away um I, it's funny actually as you get older it's, i find it more difficult to study uh, well one is having the time um, and then, you know, in the evenings, when you get to sort of my age, um, although I hear some of you be laughing, it actually, uh, you know, you just want to sort of sit down, don't you, and veg out. So that's me anyway. So, so there you go. So um, there you go. Another, another video, uh, another weekend of lockdown. Um, this is what I'm going to be doing. Um, it's really nice because I get a lot of very positive comments from you guys about these videos and uh, how it kind of inspires some of you to uh to do something with the radio um you know just listen dx play with an antenna um you know whatever it might be so uh plane going over the house um you know so it's nice for me that you guys appreciate these videos and it's obviously very nice for me that you want me to continue irrespective of if and when you know the whole lockdown situation uh, rectifies itself so that's good to know okay well i wish you all a very nice weekend i think the weather's sort of going to be pretty good um and uh no doubt i'll be talking to you, some of you uh, on the radio um uh, if you're harwell members and uh communicating with you via the comments on the uh, oxford shortwave log um channel so anyway all the best keep safe and 73 thanks for watching